Hey, what's up? Alistair Cunningham here. Welcome to episode three of my buy, refurbish, refinance project that I am undertaking. Uh, so, uh, this week, first thing to do, if you've not seen episode two, go and watch it. Link is in the description. Episode two, it's about half an hour long. Uh, watch it because that covers the due diligence with regards to the tenant demand, the HMO demand, single let demand, and to make sure that actually the property, once we've done it, once we've converted it, will rent out crucial importance like it, it, it has to work financially otherwise you're just what's the point like we're here to make money so we need to know that when you're looking at any property it will rent out so it's crucially crucially important uh, now in this week's episode what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking to you about how what do we do now so now we we know the property is going to rent out what about things like um, obviously the refurb cost we need to know how much the refurb is going to cost we know we can do it as single let or HMO, so we need to know how much a refurb is going to cost for single let, also for HMO. So since episode two, I've managed to get my builders to come down and have a look at the property, um, and we'll, we'll be able to cover some of that. So this week's planning to be a good episode. Make sure you stay tuned. Also, make sure you get subscribed and turn on notifications that way um, if you want to follow in the whole series. Um, and hopefully by the end of this episode, I'll have a decision if I'm going to put an offer forward. Keep watching and let's start speaking to the experts and find out exactly what's going to happen now. That is all the pipework needs changing because this is leaking, it's wrong. Oh, okay. It's all green. Yeah. I like this coming out on me. This. So the floor went that, that way so we can plumb through to that. Yeah. Go straight to the, across to the, across yeah. to where the toilet oh, is now. Fine. I'll lead into that. Uh, because we've got enough space under there to put a, a waste pipe instead of dropping it below the seat. Yeah. Oh, as long as we run that way, we should be fine. So we should be all right for this one, that one, yeah. uh, and the other two, because they should all run that way now. And then you can just plumb into the existing yeah. waste. That what? That'll go straight down. I'm kind of open to save that, so don't. Uh... You want to keep that toilet seat? <laughs> <laughs> Is that for a crack ass? Yeah. Um, okay, so. So yeah, new corridor through here. Take that suite the suite on the suite. Two bedroom. We'll rebuild this. Yeah. Allow two on suites, one each side. That way, actually, the window this side. Yeah. Uh, and a window that side. They're, they're, they're all sides. Uh, they're rubbish. They're really all the windows have been changed, weren't they? No, basically, the heating system's all been upgraded. I know it's not suitable for what we want. It's all been upgraded. All the doors and windows were changed two years ago, and there's been nobody in here since. So. Okay. Now, this probably's been empty for two years. What are you doing? Why did you want that? Yeah. It's creating more work. I know. <laughs> Get a nail now. Knock it off. Knock it off. Knock it off. What? Knock it off because you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Right, yeah, so I, you, you reckon we can definitely get four rooms up here of decent size with en suites, easy. You'll get two decent size up here with en suites. Sweet. And then that Sound way we'll have as a, a third one there, area. And then the fourth one will be a bit small. But, but then they'll have the off suite, yeah. <laughs> so the just bedroom we could build over that little bit. A little yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that one we're creating a corridor as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For fire, you're creating somewhere where you can get out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was so funny. It was so funny, right? Yesterday, it's been to the lady. Rick, get this on camera. Yesterday, I was speaking to the lady, right? She was telling us the horror stories of what happened in here. And I went, I said, look, Dan, I said, don't worry. No, we're not gonna, like, I'll, I'll, you're not gonna have any problems with the tenants we put in here, okay? I said, absolutely, don't worry. And I gave her my phone number and I said, if you have any problems, like with the builder, he's a bit of a wrong and he's coming down. <laughs> if he calls he's up from home. <laughs> <laughs> This this uh, mess here, worry is is a concern. Obviously, no. I did get, I did get it looked at, but obviously uh, we'll, let, we'll put a little back in and build that back up. Uh, I, yeah, and just shrink it as, as small as possible. Because this is where the onto it's going to go. Yeah. How much can you shrink that pillar? You can only shrink that to four. Can you take one brick? Yeah, you can one brick. Well, yeah. That's fine, then. that will be where the divide and wall go. This, you're not really going to notice it. No, you won't. No. Yeah, I was thinking that. Concrete floor. Yeah. Okay, so fine, keep the kitchen there then. But, but you, you, what you could do is put the, the main kitchen here. Kitchen. And then just utility. utility uh, but bear in mind, five bed HMO has to have the, the, the proper length kitchen. Yeah. So even if we had. Well, that would be from there all the way down to that hall. And a little bit there. No, because if we open that up. Yeah, but technically, you can make a kitchen.
You've got? Yeah. No, no, he wants to he wants to yeah, yeah, he just says, yeah. You've got two problems in this area. One, it could be locked down in two weeks. Oh, yeah, Bedford. Bedford is on the list. Is it really? Yes, it's number five in the whole of the UK for the most coronavirus. <laughs> Bedford, Bradford, Wigan, Manchester, Leeds might follow Leicester in, right, two, right. in a couple of weeks. Uh, and the other thing is supplying, suppliers. Yeah. yeah. So you've got, <coughs> I would say, it, yeah, you're looking at end of September, after September yeah. for this to be finished. It's got to be. Oh yeah, now there's no escape. This is why it's important to have a good builder who's a bit of banter and he can actually work with you to get the job done and get it done efficiently, properly. This is why it's so important to get the right advice. What I'm looking for is I want, I want this wall gone. I want this wall gone. Obviously it will have to be supported with uh, RSJs and whatever. Um, but I want this to be like a whole sort of very open plan, very big kitchen space. Um, so kitchen here and along here and then dining room area, which would obviously lead into the back. Um, so from a, a space perspective, what do you think? Well, it's, it sounds like a good idea. The, when you're going to remove those walls, actually, you will open the space, yeah. and create like a whole open area together with the kitchen. It's what people yeah. are looking for today. Um, okay, so just a little, like obviously here would just be utility room, washing machine, whatever, fridge, freezer, everything, um, which le that leads out into the back garden. But really, kitchen wise, have you seen? Have you seen enough? Do you need? Do you need any more information from me at the minute? Yes, it's uh, look like a very straightforward job. It's a standard size kitchen. Yeah. And, um, the walls are uh, uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, you can fit the kitchen. The top of it, obviously, you're doing the splashback. So. Yeah. Not much to do later on. Okay. With regards to taking this wall down and that wall, yes. obviously I've had a structural survey carried out in this property. Is there anything I need to be worried about with regards to support? Are we going to, are we going to have to support it? We're going to have to support it with an RSJ, as yeah. you say. Um, it's a metal steel beam. Yeah. Uh, Instructed by an engineer, telling us exactly how to fit it. And, and you can handle that. Wall. You can deal with that. Definitely. This wall, right. for example, is just a partition wall. Yeah. So this one, you can just remove it. It supports nothing. From yeah. Above, so it's just a straightforward yeah. knocking it down. Yeah. Same with this. We, we, I think this is a bit a massive wasted space here. It's just a, an old utility cupboard or whatever. So I think get rid of that. Let's just make the place fully open. I mean, there's not really much to see in here. It's just the other side of that, really. So um, again, there's, is there anything in here that shocks you? That's like no, it's no? not like very straightforward. Yeah, yeah ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay, so let's have a quick look here. This is just the front room. I'll let you have a little look in there. Just, um, it's just going to be standard. So just make the walls good. Get rid of all the the coving. Um, yes. Yeah, just. Would you like to remove the chimney as well? If, if yeah, if possible, yeah. But obviously that would have to be supported as well, wouldn't it? It will be supported inside the roof. Right. Okay. Normally. That's fine. So yeah, if it's possible, yeah, um, give us a bit more floor space. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, with regards to floor. In the kitchen, the whole kitchen I would like tiled, yes. and then the, the hallway would be carpeted. Um, so if you could do the tiling and I'll deal with the carpet throughout, that, that's what I'm looking at. Um, and then fire alarm system throughout the whole property as well. So. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, but I do have floor plans already drawn up, which I can send you. Yeah, uh, this kind of works normally involve plans yeah. and engineers. I've already had floor plans and engineering reports done for single let and also for five bed HMO. So I will send you them. But just from what you've seen, yes. is, there anything you're, is there anything that sort of screams at you that's concerning me? Not really. And you think, how, how, 
obviously you need to, I know you've got to go away and do some numbers and work out your, some ideas for the properties, uh, the property. Um, is there anything that's sort of jumping out that I've got a great idea about this, for instance, or? Um, I mean, there is a matter of finishes, right? So you will ask for a high-end finish. Yeah. Or, for example, pipes of radiators all around the house. Shall they stay coming out of the floor or you want them to come out of the wall in much... Ideally, I'd want it to be as cost-effective as possible, but as nice as possible. I know that's very difficult for... It's very difficult, but yeah, ideally I want them coming out the wall with plastic pipe in or whatever, nice just to tidy it up. Um, so when it comes to quality and finish, obviously I want all the walls smooth, I want all the ceilings smooth, good paint throughout, good condition throughout. The pipe work, I, I agree with you, the pipe work should come out the, out the walls as opposed to under, from underneath, which will give it that, uh, that finesse. I want like high quality uh, wall sockets. The radiators are all brand new, so maybe we could keep them, they're, they're fairly decent. I want a nice towel rail in the, in the bathroom. Um, really, I'm open for a bit of advice from you as well. Um, Budget wise, I'm not like, Going to, I'm not going to scrimp and scrape. I want, it, I want it done properly and I want it done to as high possible spec for as low possible money, as every customer yeah. says that, I'm sure. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll let you do your numbers and come up with some ideas. Uh, as with all refurb projects, you always get three quotes. Uh, never just go with the first per person that quotes you. And it's not always about going for the cheapest person either. It's about understanding who who that person is. Like, do, do you want to work with them? Can you work with them? Um, like, Regev here has literally dropped everything to come up here and view this on a Sunday. And as I said downstairs, that's not because he's not got any business and he's got no work. It's because he understands the value of customer service and putting the customer's need first. I'll come up today. And that's, do you know, that says a lot. Um, so it's not always about going for the cheap prices. It's about going for a win-win situation. It's about going for a situation where, do you know what? I like the guy, let's do some business. Uh, and if it's, if it's not necessarily the cheapest, it's not always the problem. So that's business. And in business, you have to work with people you like. Thank you, my friend. Thank you nice. What's your name of your company? Uh, Yoffi Construction LTD. Okay. We're based in London, Northwest London. Yeah. And, uh, we are happy to advise anyone who need our help. Oh, amazing. Okay, so what I'll do, I will stick a link below. Uh, make sure that you connect. Right, okay, so uh, builders have been out, they've priced the work up. Um, I've had quotes for single let, high end, HMO five bed and a HMO six bed. Um, I've also had it confirmed by uh, the local authority and my architect that the issues at the back are gonna be no problem. We'll be able to get them sorted out by putting the correct repair works in place. Uh, so they're gonna have to put an RSJ across the top. They're going to have to get uh, building regs out to make sure it's been done properly and then they'll just approve it. Uh, so that's all good. That puts uh, a lot of uh, worries to ease. Now, uh, I've had the quotes come in for the refurb. Um, so basically, here's the, here's the quotes. Um, so for single let, um, I've been quoted £25,174. Um, let me just give you a rundown of what's actually included. So, plastering throughout, two coats of multi-finish, uh, new skim to kitchen utility walls, uh, reboarding, skimming new en suite ceilings, uh, repair walls where applicable after electricians have been in, removing all rubbish from site, making sure all the walls are finished to a good standard ready for paint. Uh, that's coming at £2,700. Um, you've got electrics, what's included in the electrics. Um, okay, so checking the main consumer unit, changing if necessary, uh, install new IP rated light to bathroom, ex ex new extractor fans to ensuite, new isolators outside each bathroom above doors for fans, replace all sockets and wall, uh, wall plugs throughout, current pendants, replace them, new, uh, put new USB style sockets on the walls, run all the electrics for the new kitchen and all the new utilities that are getting installed, certify the whole property, and again, make, make everything as, as it's uh, a good, safe property to comply with uh, all the local um, rules, regulations for being a, a rental property. That's coming at three and a half thousand pounds. Building works, rip outs. So the main rip out, rip the property out. Uh, supply and install new kitchen designed to customer specs. Install new stressed concrete lintels. 
uh, new RSJ, new glass splashbacks, new white goods, fridge, freezer, washing machine, new door frames throughout, um, new door architraves and skirting boards, new stud walling to accommodate en suites, uh, new flooring, make good all the walls for the rear of the bedroom, reinforced floor joists because upstairs the floor joists are not great, um, and any other architect, uh, architectural building work that needs doing that they come across. That's coming in at £8,000. Um, again, I'm very happy with this. Uh, decoration, so the property is going to be decorated fully top to bottom and basically that's coming in at £4,300. That includes paint, like uh, sanding all the woodwork, making it all good, uh, feature walls, all that sort of stuff, new painting all the doors, all that sort of stuff, coming in at 4,350, and then plumbing. So new boiler system, new tank, uh, and so new boiler on first floor, uh, repiping, so repipe all the radiators, uh, repipe all the ensuite, repipe all the kitchen, um, fit glass splashbacks to all the ensuites, enclosures above sinks, tiling, new kitchen sink, and supply any sort of safety certificates that are needed for the gas or anything like that. That's coming in at 6,000. So in total, it's about 25,000 pounds. That's for a high-end single-let property. So for a five-bed HMO, it's coming in at 40,584 pounds, which is where I would expect. Single-lets are always a little bit cheaper than multi-lets. As a five-bed, it's gonna to have to be licensed. It's gonna to have to go through licensing and fire regulation, all that sort of stuff that is more in depth than that would be as a single let. Plus, this is for five en suites in all the bedrooms. Now, we were gonna go down the route of a six-bed, but after speaking to my uh, builder and various different people, I decided six-bed would be a little bit too tight. Um, so the rooms wouldn't be of an ad. They would be big enough for, for legalities, but I felt, let's go five bed, give them all a little bit more space, it will reduce the costs down a little bit as well with regards to we don't have to have the extra ensuite and the extra bedroom. And it's just going to make it a bit more of a, a nicer uh, presentable HMO. So I think it's either for me going to be a single let or a HMO but a five bedroom HMO. And we know refurb for single let 25, refurb for HMO 40. So I'm going to add 10% to both of them. So refurb for HMO 44, single let 27,500. Okay, so since filming uh, the early part of this episode, uh, it's, there's been about three weeks have passed. Now I've had the property valued by my finance company. They've sent a valuation uh, team out there to value it and to do a structural survey. And that's coming back, that's come back quite good, but we'll get there. Uh, first things first, my bill has been out, they've quoted. Second thing, I've spoke to my finance guy. I know how I'm going to finance it. Uh, I've got two options on that. First option could be 65% loan to value and then the development fully funded by the bridging company and then I could refinance it onto a buy to let or we could do it originally 90% loan to value but they will not fund the development. Okay, so we need to work out the best way to do that. The second thing and the most interesting thing, the valuation has come back. So the lender, CPF1 Limited, um, is the, the bridger that's going to finance the property. They valued the property at £350,000, done up as bricks and mortar. Not as a HMO, as bricks and mortar, okay? So on that basis, I know I can get 75% loan to value very, like, very easily, straightforward, no problem. So once I've done all the work, I can refinance this property and they'll value it at £350,000. So I know I can get 75%. So I know I'm going to be able to get £262,500 back from the lender. I know that worst case, as a HMO, it's going to cost me £444,000. So let's just say £210,000 plus £44,000. We're now at £254,000. Yes, I'm going to have some costs with regards to stamp duty. I'm going to have some costs with regards to legals and also financing with the bridging company. So even if, we, even if we said the bridging company and the legals, legals will be about eight to £10,000 depending on what stamp duty rate I get. But I'm hoping to get stamp duty exemption because it's uninhabitable. So that will be really low. But even, even, I just can't get my head around, it's such a good deal. Even if I paid full stamp duty and I paid the full 12 months interest on the bridging finance, that's still going to come in at less than £20,000. Like, so my total money in is going to be around two seventy, but it's worth three fifty. 
and I'm going to be able to refinance at 75%. I told you, it's a good deal. I told you. So I'm going to put an offer in. I'm going to get that offer secured and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy this deal. I'm excited because of what I think. If my numbers are right and I can do this quite quickly, I'm going to save a lot of money on bridging interest and I'm going to pull money out. I'm going to pull money out. This will end up being a no money left in deal. You watch. I'm confident. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and put an offer in uh, and then let's go ahead and get this thing bought. And let's get some finance raised and let's go through the whole process of buying it now because I'm buying it. That's it. I'm putting an offer forward and let's see what happens. you got to keep watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're subscribed because this could all go Pete Tom. This could. But I don't matter because I like taking risk because it could also go very, very well, which I think it will. Guys, keep watching. Get subscribed. Turn on notifications. See you next time.